It should not have been possible, and yet it happened. For decades, scientists believed there was a boundary in time that human DNA could not cross. Beyond a certain age, the genetic code simply collapses, bonds break, molecules decay, the biological record fades into silence. The earliest chapters of our species were assumed to be unreachable. But that belief has just been overturned. In Central Europe, researchers have now sequenced DNA from human remains more than 45,000 years old. Not fragments, not guesses, complete genomes, the real biological signatures of some of the first modern humans to ever enter Europe. Pause and think about that. This is not reconstruction. This is not theory. This is the actual genetic code of people who lived at the edge of survival during the Ice Age at the very dawn of European human history. For generations, archaeologists relied on stone tools, bones, and cave sites to tell this story. They could see where people lived, what they hunted, how they buried their dead. But one question remained unanswered. Who were these people, really? Did the first humans to arrive in Europe become our ancestors, or did they vanish, leaving no trace behind? Until now, no one could say for certain, because the story does not begin with writing or monuments or memory. It begins with bones, and inside those bones, something unexpected survived. The first clue was uncovered long before anyone realized its importance. In 1950, archaeologists excavating a site known as Zlaty Kun in what is now Czechia uncovered a human skull. It belonged to a young woman. The bone was cracked, worn by time, but remarkably complete. It was catalogued, measured, compared, and then stored away. For decades, it told no further story. At the time, no one imagined that inside those fossilized remains, microscopic fragments of DNA were still preserved. The assumption was simple. DNA that old could not survive. There was no reason to look. Years later, similar discoveries followed. Bones from caves in Germany, including jaw bones and teeth from a site called Bacho Kiro. Human remains associated with some of the earliest stone tools made by modern humans in Europe. Again, they were studied through archaeology, not genetics. But science was changing. A new field was emerging, paleogenomics, the sequencing of DNA from ancient humans. It promised answers archaeology alone could never provide. But there was a problem. DNA this old is nothing like a modern lab sample. It is shattered into countless fragments, chemically damaged and contaminated by bacteria and soil accumulated over thousands of years. Reading it would require entirely new methods. For years, progress was slow. Scientists could recover small pieces, a marker here, a hint there, enough to suggest relationships, but never enough to tell a complete story. Many believed full genomes from remains this ancient were simply out of reach. Then the limits began to fall. The breakthrough came from an unlikely source, teeth. Unlike most bones, teeth are incredibly dense. Their inner layers can seal off DNA from moisture, microbes, and temperature swings. They act as natural time capsules, protected, isolated, waiting. At the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Leipzig, scientists developed techniques precise enough to access that inner vault. Working in sterile clean rooms, they drilled microscopic amounts of powder from the inside of ancient teeth. Inside that powder were traces of DNA that had not been touched since the Ice Age. What they found stunned them. Using advanced sequencing technology and new computational tools, researchers began assembling the fragments, millions of broken pieces slowly stitched together. What emerged were complete, readable genomes from humans who lived more than 45,000 years ago. These were the oldest human genomes ever decoded. Not symbolic, not reconstructed, real individuals some of the very first modern humans to spread into Europe after leaving Africa. 
And when scientists compared these ancient genomes to those of living humans, something extraordinary appeared. Running through these ancient genomes were long, uninterrupted stretches of Neanderthal DNA, far longer than anything found in people today. Why does that matter? Because DNA changes with every generation. When two populations interbreed, their genetic material starts out in long blocks. Over time, those blocks are broken apart and shortened as generations pass. Length becomes a clock. The unusually long Neanderthal segments told scientists that these individuals lived not long after modern humans and Neanderthals first interbred, not tens of thousands of years later, just a few hundred generations removed. You are looking almost directly at the aftermath of that encounter. This was not a distant echo. This was fresh genetic evidence of two human species meeting, mixing, and leaving a lasting mark. It was powerful confirmation that early modern humans in Europe were not isolated from Neanderthals. They interacted, they formed relationships, they had children together. But then came the most unexpected result of all. When researchers compared these ancient genomes to those of present-day Europeans, they found almost no direct connection. The genetic line of these early people had vanished. They were not our ancestors. This discovery overturned a long-held assumption. For years, many believed the first modern humans to arrive in Europe gave rise to later populations, that Europe was settled once and those settlers endured. The DNA tells a very different story. Europe was entered in waves. Some groups arrived, adapted, and survived. Others arrived, lived for thousands of years, and then disappeared. The people from Zlati Kun and Bacho Kiro belonged to an early wave that left no descendants alive today. They were pioneers who opened the path, but whose lineage ended. Think about what that means. Entire populations with their own cultures, languages, and traditions erased so completely that only a few bones and fragments of DNA remain. No descendants, no memory, no voice, until now. Their extinction was not sudden or dramatic. It was likely the result of small population sizes, harsh ice age climates, limited resources, and competition with both Neanderthals and later human groups. Survival was never guaranteed. Every generation was a risk. And yet, without these early pioneers, later migrations may never have succeeded. They explored new lands, learned which environments could support life. They carried humanity forward, even if their own genetic line did not survive. These genomes revealed something deeper about our species. They showed how fragile humanity once was. Modern humans were not an unstoppable force sweeping across continents. We were vulnerable, experimental, often unsuccessful. Small bands scattered across vast, frozen landscapes facing predators, extreme cold, and uncertainty at every turn. One failed season could mean extinction, and still, people kept moving. The data also revealed how time leaves its mark inside us. The length of Neanderthal DNA segments acts like a genetic clock, allowing scientists to estimate how recently interbreeding occurred. By reading those molecular signatures, researchers could peer into one of the most pivotal moments in human evolution. Not through stories, not through artifacts, but through the code of life itself. And there was one final realization. Human history is not a straight line. It is a braided river. Streams split, others merge, some dry out entirely. The people from these ancient genomes were one of those lost streams, which raises a haunting question. How many entire peoples have lived and vanished without a trace? How many human stories remain buried, waiting for their DNA to be read? The past is no longer silent, and with every new genome recovered, it speaks a little louder.